Hi everyone, this is Pending Kill, and welcome to our series on Unreal Engine. Today we're going to be learning how you can implement a flexible health, damage, and respawn system that you can use in your games, whether that's a shooter, RPG, platformer, or any other genre. We'll cover best practices with blueprints, introduce interfaces and inheritance, and avoid common mistakes. The source code will be linked in the description if you want to check out the project on your own machine. Let's jump in. So the first thing we'll do is implement a basic health system. I'll be using a third person template here, but it'll work just the same in the first person template or in any other project for that matter. First thing we'll do, of course, is put a health variable in our player character. So let's open that up and make a new variable on the left hand side, call it health. And we're going to make this a float. Then we'll need a way to take damage. For this, we'll be using interface. An interface is a way to implement certain functionality in a variety of different classes. For example, say you have an enemy, a friendly AI teammate, and a destructible vehicle in your game. All three should take damage, but each one will probably handle damage differently. The enemy would lose health and get aggroed. The teammate, if there's no friendly fire, wouldn't lose health but might cuss you out, and the car would catch on fire. By having these classes implement a damageable interface, we're saying that each one is able to be damaged, but how they implement that is left to that particular class. So in Unreal Engine Blueprints, we can do this with something called a Blueprint Interface. Now we're going to add a new Blueprint Interface by right-clicking here and then selecting Blueprints and then the Blueprint Interface. We're going to call this BPI Damageable. Now if we open up, we see that there is a new function here and we're going to call this function Take Damage. Essentially what a uh, Blueprint Interface is, is a collection of functions and if your class implements that blueprint interface, that means they implement all these different functions that are specified. We're going to add a new input here, um, call it damage, and this is going to be the amount of damage that should be applied. All right, let's compile that. And then in our third person character, we're going to implement this blueprint interface by going to the class settings, interfaces, and then BPI damageable. Now we're gonna compile and in our right click context menu, we should see take damage show up. Um, it's important to note that we want the one under add event, not the one under class. That one won't do what we're looking for. So now we have this event take damage. And the first thing we're gonna do is subtract this amount of damage from our health. So let's grab our health variable and then do a subtract node. And then we'll wire our damage under that. And then we're going to set our health variable to that new value. Now let's display on the screen just so we know what's going on. And then we'll set some kind of default value for health like 100. Now we need something that can actually cause that damage. So we're gonna create a new actor um, just for test purposes. So we can create a new blueprint actor and we're going to very creatively call this damage actor. We're gonna open that up and then create a cube component as well as a box collision. The cube is just for reference, so we know where it is in the scene and we can see it visually. In the box component, we're going to make it slightly bigger than the cube so that we can overlap with it. Now we're going to go to our event graph and drag out the pin from actor begin overlap and then call take damage. And let's say 10 damage. Now we can add our damage actor to our scene somewhere and then test it out. Okay, so we see that it's going from 90 to 80 to 70, etc. So now that we have our player character taking damage, we need to implement what happens when its health goes below zero, when it dies. Now, what exactly happens would depend on your game, of course, and you'll have to think about your own unique needs. But some common things include unpossessing the character so you can no longer control it, fading the camera, displaying some text, and restarting the level. Implementing these things is going to touch a number of things, starting with the player controller where we'll be putting most of the logic. Now the reasoning behind putting this logic inside our player controller instead of the third person character is that the pawn or character that the player controls might change. Say your player was controlling a vehicle, and now the vehicle is the controlled pawn instead of the third person character. Or what if they're in a multiplayer game and they're controlling a spectator pawn? 
we want to try to put our logic inside the class that best fits the behavior that we're looking for. And in this case, the player controller is what persists with the player throughout the game. So first off, we're going to create a new player controller. Let's go right click, create a new blueprint class, and then select player controller. We're going to call this BP player controller. And if we open that up and go to our event graph, we're going to create a new custom event. And we're gonna call it on death. The first thing we're gonna do inside this event is unpossess whatever pawn is currently being controlled by this controller. And the next thing is to fade the camera. To do that, we're going to first get a reference to the player camera manager. And then we're going to call the method start camera fade on it. We can do all sorts of things with the player camera manager. For this, we're going to stick with a simple fade. We're going to fade from alpha of zero, which is fully transparent, to one, which is fully opaque, over the course of one second. And we're going to use a black fade, but you can change this if you want. We're also going to hold on finish, otherwise it'll just revert back to transparent after one second. And the next thing we're going to do is create a widget that says you died or something like that. In order to do that, we're going to create a new widget blueprint by going to user interface blueprint. And then we'll, let's call this WBP you died. Open that up and we're going to just add a simple text element here. Type in some text and we can center it by first setting the anchor to the center of the screen. Uh, we can reset the X and Y position and then we can make the X and Y size a little bit bigger since we're going to make the text bigger. Uh, we can also drag it around to kind of just center that box. And then we can make the font, let's say 90. Let's adjust that a little bit. Uh, we can make the X just a little bit wider to cover that width. So let's close out of this, let's save. Now back to our player controller class, we're going to create this widget by calling a create widget and selecting our you died widget. And the Onium player is going to be this player controller or self. Now we're going to add this widget to our viewport by calling add to viewport. And then we're going to set a delay. And this delay is going to be however long we want our player to be staring at that text for. After we do that, we're going to remove that widget from its parent by calling the remove from parent method. Now the next step is to restart our level. There is a reset level function inside the game mode class, which is what we're going to use. The game mode class basically stores the rules and conditions of the game, as well as what happens when those conditions are met. Now in order to do that, we're going to first call the get game mode function and then call restart game. Now you'll see that this is not listed in the actions. This is because a few versions ago, the game mode class was split into a game mode base and a regular game mode class, which has more features. Uh, the restart functionality we're looking for is in the regular class. Now in order to do that, we're going to go into our game mode class, third person game mode, and we're going to change its parent class. It's default set to game mode base, and we're going to change it to the regular game mode. We'll also have to change our default game state. We can do that by going to our settings, our project settings, and the maps and modes on the left-hand side. And then here, we can change from game state base to game state. The game mode class has to work with game state, otherwise, Unreal will throw an error. So back to our player controller class. Now, because the return type of this function is game mode base, we're going to have to cast it to our own custom third person game mode class. So we're going to cast here. And then as third person game mode, we can finally call restart game. Now we can change our third person character class to call this on death custom event. First of all, we're going to check that our health is below zero. So we can do a less than here, less than or equal to zero. And if that's the case, we can do a branch. If that branch tree is true, we're going to get the player controller or get the controller 
of this pawn and cast that to our BP player controller. And then finally call our on death event. In order to make testing this a little bit faster, we're going to change the amount of damage that this gives to let's say 110. Now it should be an insta kill. One final thing that I forgot is to change our default player controller class to BP player controller instead of the default player controller. So we can do that by going again to our project settings and then change our player controller class to BP player controller. Now, if we test this, this box should insta kill our character. Now it does look a little bit weird to have that running animation still playing when that character is dead. So let's do a ragdoll animation instead. So if we open up our third person character, um, right here on this branch, when it's true, when its health is less than zero, we're going to add a simulate physics node. This will disable player input from controlling the character and the skeletal mesh limbs will fall down due to gravity. And the other thing we're going to adjust is our collision preset from character mesh to ragdoll. If it's set to character mesh, it'll actually fall through the world once simulate physics is turned on. And obviously you don't want that. So now it should play this ragged animation. It's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> now there is another common death scenario, which is when the player falls out of the world. So if we delete our wall here, we need to make sure in our game when the player falls off the map that their death is handled properly. What happens by default in Unreal Engine is when you jump off and reach a certain Z level, the engine will just delete your character. Now that breaks all of our on death logic that we just made. And we'll have to figure out how we can make sure that logic still gets called when our character is deleted. In order to do that, we're going to go into our game mode class and we're going to set a check that will trigger when the character is destroyed. We're first going to create a begin play node and then get our player character. We're going to call an assign on destroyed event. Now essentially what this does is it binds this custom event to when our player character is destroyed. So when we fell off that map there, the engine called destroy actor on our player character, and we can set a check for that by using this assign command. And now when we get to this on destroyed event, we're going to call that on death event in our player controller. So we can get our player controller and then cast that to our BP player controller and then call our on death event, just as before. Now, if we play this, we should still see that camera fade and then that text pop up, even though our character is destroyed instead of its health going to zero. So now we have a functioning health damage and respawn system in place, but it only works on our single player character. What if we have enemies and non-playable characters that also have some starting health and can take damage and so on? We don't wanna to have to re-implement that system every time we want to add a new character. So we're going to use classes and inheritance to share that logic between all those classes. Now, what is inheritance? Simply put, it's when you can derive one class called a child from another class called the parent. And the child class inherits the functionality from the parent. So instead of having just the third person character implement health and apply damage, we can actually move that to a parent class called something like base character, and then have both the third person character and then our enemy characters and other non-playable characters inherit from that base. So let's start by creating a base character by creating a new blueprint class and then select character. And we can call this BP underscore base character. Now inside the space character, we're going to go to the event graph. And now we're going to go into a third person character and then copy all of these nodes into our base character, except the uh, original event. So we paste that 
And then we're going to set up our base character with that BPI damageable interface, as well as adding back our health variable. Then after we compile, we can add back in that take damage event. And we can rewire it like so. And then compile. And then we're going to go to our third person character and remove this redundant logic. So let's delete that, delete our health. And then if we go into our class settings, we can change the parent class from our default character to our base character and remove this interface here. Now, if we press play, we should see that same functionality. So far, we've created our own homegrown implementation of damage handling, but it's pretty simplistic and doesn't really cover all combat scenarios. For example, what if we want a headshot to do more damage than a body shot? Or what if we want a grenade to do some kind of explosive damage to the surrounding area? In order to do that, we need to add a lot of additional parameters to our take damage function. Fortunately, Epic has their own implementation of a damage interface inside Unreal Engine that has all these things and pretty much everything else you could ask for. So in this section, we're going to replace our damage interface with the built-in Unreal Engine version. So let's open up our damage actor. And there are a few different types of uh, damage that Unreal Engine provides us. There is the regular applied damage. This is kind of like a base or generic version. Um, and then there is point damage, which is useful for hit scan or projectile weapons. And then there is an apply radial damage, which is great for area of effect attacks or grenades or things like that. So uh, here we're just going to go over this base generic version, and I'm going to link to some videos that explain these two in more detail. Um, for applied damage, we have damaged actor, which is the actor we're going to inflict damage onto. So in this case, that would be this other actor here. We have the base damage, which is just the amount of damage. We have the event instigator, which is the controller that's responsible for causing that damage, whether that's a enemy AI controller or a another player controller if we're playing a multiplayer game. And then we have the damage causer, which is the actor that inflicts the damage, whether that's the grenade or perhaps the pawn or character that caused the damage. And then we have the damage type class. And you can make subclasses here for fire damage, water, poison, anything that you want custom behavior for. So here we're going to connect up this apply damage and delete this take damage event here and then wire up the other actor to damaged actor and then set the base damage to 10 like we had before. And now let's go to our BP base character and then replace this take damage event with the Unreal Engine built-in version, which we can find by searching for event damage. And then we have any damage, point damage, and radial damage. And these three events are complements to the apply damage functions that we just looked at. So here we have the any damage, which is what we're going to use. And then we can wire it up like that, the damage, and then we can test it out. So we can see that it's working based on these numbers that are going down. Now you should have the information to implement a health, damage, and respawn system into your own game and take it from there. We'd love to know what kind of systems you're working on. Are you making an RPG with tons of damage types? Or are you making a shooter with regenerative health? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of these, drop us a like, be sure to subscribe, and let us know in the comments what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. If you want to support the channel, check out our Patreon where we're releasing early access builds of our games, voting on future video topics, and hanging out on Discord. See you in the next one.